Hello everyone. On this video we will be looking at rules for multiplying and dividing whole number expressions so that you can simplify them. Okay. So first thing we're going to look at, if you remember the previous video, we had the commutative property for addition. But on this one, we're looking at the commutative property for multiplication. Okay. And for that, it's A times B is equal to B times A. Or A times B times C equals A times B times C. Okay. And again, commutative property is just with addition and multiplication. It just means you can shuffle them around. That's all it means. It's no more complicated than that. Okay. And just like before, remember, if you think of commute, where if you commute from home to work, it means you're moving from your home to your job. So your commutative property means you're moving them around. So that's how, again, that's how I'll remember. It. Okay. So, for example, if you have two times three, you'll get the same answer as three times two. Or if you have five times two times four, you'll get the same answer as two times five times four. Okay, now, your numbers involved that are being multiplied, the numbers, or in some cases variables, being multiplied, are called factors. Okay, so in this case, your five is a factor, two is a factor, and your four is a factor. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move this up a little bit. Now we look at the associative property for multiplication. Okay, and just like with addition, the associative property for addition, that just means you can multiply any two and then multiply the third one later. In this case, you can multiply the A and the B and then multiply that answer to C. Or in this one, you can multiply the B and the C, then multiply that answer to A. Okay, so in this case, five times two in parentheses. So if you multiply five times two, you get 10. And 10 times four is 40. In this case, if you multiply the two times four, you get eight. And eight times five will give you 40. So you get the same answer either way. Okay, same thing here. If you get two times eight, you get 16. And 16 times three is 48. You get three times two, you get six. And six times eight is 48. Okay, all right. So if you are still writing this, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and move on to our next page. And we separate that a little bit. Oops. There we go. Okay, now for your translations. You know you're going to multiply if you see the words multiplication or if you see product of. Even if you see the word times, sometimes you have it just times. If you see double, that means it's times two. If you see triple, that means it's times three. OK. So you have three X reads as three times a number. Okay, so of course our variable or unknown number is just going to be x or n or any value we want or any variable we want. Okay. Or you can write it as the product of three and a number. Okay, so if you see here, product of three and a number or three times a number. Okay. Or you could see it as triple a number. 
Okay. Or you should could see it as 3 multiplied by a number. Okay, so any of those could still give you that same answer if you decided to just write it into words. All right. Now, if you think about it conceptually, multiplication is just a faster way to add. That's really all it is. It's kind of a really quick way to add. So let's say if you have five times two. Five times two is just five times five. So it's five two times. You're going to add five two times. Okay. Now, if you flip them around and get two times five, that means you're going to add two five times. Both of them will give you the exact same answer. Five plus five is ten. Two plus two plus two plus two plus two is also ten. So either way, you get the same answer. But that's just the general idea behind it. All right. So if you are still writing this, of course, feel free to press pause and finish up. We're going to go ahead and move on to our next page. Okay. So let's say, for example, if we wanted to simplify for problem A, 7 times 2B. For problem B, you have 6 times 4x times 3. And for problem C, you have 5 times 4 times x times 0. Okay, so what I want you to do is go ahead and press pause and give these a try on your own. See if you can simplify them. Alright, so I'm assuming you've pressed pause and worked this out. So let's go ahead and verify your answer. Okay, so for problem A, 7 times 2B, using the associative property, you can rewrite that as 7 times 2 times B. Now you can put it as times B or you can just put the B. Because whenever you have a the parentheses and a number or variable next to it, it's automatically implied that it's multiplying. So you can put just the B right here or you can put the dot for multiplication right there. Either way, it's the same thing. Okay, so 2 times 7 or 7 times 2 is 14. So you have 14 times B or just 14B which is the more common way to write it. Okay, now for problem B, you have 6 times 4x times 3. And again, if you want to put the dot there, you can. But whenever you have the parentheses and a variable or number right next to it, it's automatically multiplication. Okay, now using the associative property and the commutative property, you have 6 times 4 times 3 times x. Or you could just put x right there. Okay, so you have 6 times 4 times 3 times x. 6 times 4 is 24. 24 times 3 is 72. So that gives you 72 times x or just 72x. Okay. Now for C, you have 5 times 4 times x times 0. This one will be rather easy because if you get all of the numerical values together, you have 5 times 4 times 0. 0 times anything is going to be 0. So this ends up just being 0 times x. And again, zero times anything is zero, so you end up with just zero. Okay, so note, zero times any number
is automatically zero. Just a little reminder. All right, so if you're still writing, feel free to press pause, but we're going to go ahead and move on to our next page. And if I can separate it, there we go. Okay, now the same way multiplication is just a faster way to add, Believe it or not, division is just a faster way to subtract. Okay, so let's say, for example, we have 88 divided by 7. Okay, now if we go ahead and rewrite that as 88 divided by 7, and we divide that, 7 goes into 8 once, 7 times 1 is 7. We go ahead and subtract. 8 minus 7 is 1, and we bring down our 8. 7 goes to 18 twice. 7 times 2 is 14. 18 minus 14 is 4. We don't have any other values to bring down. So this 4 is our remainder, and our answer is 12. So 88. Divided by 17, let me go ahead and write that underneath here. Oh, divide by 7, sorry. Clean that up some. Is equal to 12 with a remainder of 4. <clears throat> okay. Now, how is that related to subtraction? I'll show you. Let's go ahead and separate that. So what if we have 88? So we have 88 divided by 7. Okay. So what if we subtract 7 from 88? 88 minus 7 is 81. Okay. What if we subtract 7 from that again? 81 minus 7 is 74. What if we subtract 7 again? Okay. 74 minus 7 is 67. What if we subtract 7 again? 67 minus 7 is 60. Let me bring that up. What if we subtract 7 again? 60 minus 7 is 53. What if we subtract 7 again? 53 minus 7 is 46. And what if we subtract 7 again? 46 minus 7 is 39. And I'll bring, since we're running out of room, I'll just bring that 39 up here. Okay. What if we subtract 7 again? 39 minus 7 is 32. What if we subtract 7 again? 32 minus 7 is 25. What if we subtract 7 again? 25 minus 7 is 18. And what if we subtract 7 again? 18 minus 7 is 11. What if we subtract 7 again? 11 minus 7 is 4, and we can't subtract 4 from 7, so we stop there. Okay. Now, if you look at it, how many times were we able to subtract 7? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. We were able to subtract 7 12 times until we ended up with a remainder of 4, which ironically means 88 divided by 7 is 12 with a remainder of 4. Okay. So that's just a little concept reminder there just to show you what we're dealing with. All right. So if you're still writing, feel free to press pause, but we're going to go ahead and move on to our next page. If I can separate it, there we go. And this shows our laws of division. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now our first law of division is any number divided by itself equals one. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, for example, 4 divided by 4 will equal 1. 
or 15 divided by 15 is going to equal 1. Or 43 divided by 43 is going to equal 1. Okay. Also, any number divided by 1 equals that number. Okay, so for example, 5 divided by 1 is equal to 5. Any number divided by 1 is equal to that number. Or 12 divided by 1 is going to equal 12. Or 78 divided by 1 is going to equal 78. Okay, now what's our next law of division? Zero divided by any non zero number equals zero. Okay, so for example, zero divided by two is going to equal zero. 0 divided by 83, you can pick any number, equals 0. Or 0 divided by 9 is going to equal 0. Okay. Now the next law of division is a little bit of a twist. If you notice here, when it's written as a quotient, the 0 is on, on top. Okay, now when the zeros on the bottom, that shows that any number divided by zero is undefined. Okay, so for example, here we know that zero divided by two is zero, but if we have like a 7 divided by 0, that's going to be undefined. 0 divided by 83 is 0, but if we had 12 divided by 0, that's going to be undefined. We have 0 divided by 9 is 0, but if we have 32 divided by 0, that's going to be undefined. All right. Oh, let me make sure. Oh, there we go. All right. Now, if we're looking for division when we're going to translate, there are a few words and phrases that you want to look out for. Okay, so for division, and I'll use a little division symbol, you're going to see the words, of course, division, you're going to see the word quotient, you're going to see divided or divided by. You're going to see divided equally or divided equally among. Or you may see shared equally. Okay. Now, if you see any of those words or phrases in a problem, then you know you're going to divide. All right.
So if you are still writing, of course, feel free to press pause and finish up. But we're going to go ahead and move on to a couple of examples. Okay, so we want you to translate to numbers and symbols. Okay, so you have 14 divided by a number. You have the quotient of 27 and 5. You have 53 eggs divided equally among 8 baskets. And you have 47 divided by 47. All right. So what I want you to do is go ahead and press pause and try these on your own. All right, so I'm assuming you've pressed pause and worked these out. So let's go ahead and verify your answer. Okay, so for problem A, you have 14 divided by a number. Now we don't know what a number is, so we're going to use a variable. You have 14 divided by a number or 14 divided by a number or 14 divided by a number. Okay. Those are the translations using number and symbols. Okay. Now for problem B, you have the quotient of 27 and 5. Now quotient, again, that's one of those let you know you're going to use division. Okay. So the quotient of 27 and 5 is 27 divided by 5. Or quotient of 27 and 5, or the quotient of 27 and 5. Okay, with problem C, same thing. You have 53 eggs divided equally among eight baskets. Okay, so 53 divided equally among eight baskets. Or you can write it as 53 divided equally among eight baskets. Or you have 53 divided among eight baskets. Okay, you write those, either one of those ways would be correct. Or you have 47 divided by 47. That's 47 divided by 47. Or you can write it as 47 divided by 47 or 47 divided by 47. Either way you write either one of those, you're going to get an answer of 1 for D. All right. So hopefully this all made sense and kind of went smoothly, and I will see you on the next video.